fictional telling of true events has been bandied around with this movie. Um, uh, fact and fiction, it's basically faction or <laughs> fict, if you put it together. <laughs> fict so is how good. much is, is, is real and how much is not real and what is, you know, were you guys allowed to ad lib at all? We didn't really ad lib. We had a very good script by a very good playwright, Richard Nelson, <coughs> which we sort of respected. But so it would have been rude to ad lib with a yeah. script like that. I think it's it would be quite odd if Daisy hadn't had an affair with Roosevelt, given what she said she did in her diaries. But nobody so really knows. There are lots of letters left. Yeah, as well. So, but nobody's certain. In terms of the visit, yes, it absolutely took place, and it took yes, place and over a weekend. Yes, pictures of it, and I suppose there's a little bit of artistic license with how long they were there, or if they went straight there from the last place. And also the conversations that take place in yeah, bedrooms is fictionalised, isn't it? Yeah, that, they left that out. Oh, yes, yes, exactly, all the, all the bedroom stuff is... But it was a meeting that definitely happened, and there are letters to suggest that, that this affair happened. And there's quite a lot of um, documentation about Eleanor and her... Mm. Um, all her stuff with, the, with her girlfriend. Her exciting stuff. Yes. So I think, I think sort of based on biography, but not limited by it, really, yeah. like Shakespeare. I know some of the guys actually got to look at the letters. Did you guys ever go, you know, can we just have a little, little sneak, a little look? No. Ourselves? No, I never did. That would have been fun. I never. But on the whole, our bit is quite self-contained. Mm. You know, there's plenty of biogs of George VI. Five. Fantastic bit in the movie where you guys are kind of looking out the window to spy on everybody, and everybody's effectively pretending nobody's spying on anybody else, but also knowing that everybody's looking at each other. Yeah. It's a brilliant, it's almost farcical, isn't it? It is very farcical. Yeah, it is. Yes, Lots it's, of it doors. is quite. Um, yes. Sneaking in and out of bed. The only two people who aren't allowed to have an affair is us, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, being married. Uh, now, FDR, obviously a legendary figure, um, a charmer, a free thinker. Um, I had no idea before I saw this movie that he was also kind of an ass because he treated some people really well. He was so bad to other people. And he was randy. Yeah. He was a randy. But then girl, his wife he? really wasn't up for it. So, you know, she batted for the other team. So what's, what's the guy to do? And they were very terribly, terribly mature and open about it and accepting of each other's uh, tastes. Plus, he wasn't in a wheelchair when they married, so presumably they must have had some sexual relations which then faded or went away. Well, because she turned out to be gay, so that's, that's, that's going to well. put a dampener on it a bit, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, no kidding. But, uh, <laughs> and it seems to me that a lot of people who are presidents think they sort of deserve to have affairs, don't they? They think, I'm powerful and I'm bored. Yeah. But, you know, he was doing a terribly good job presidentially. Yeah. So, really, the only person he had to apologise to was his wife, and that was all open anyway. So I can't see the problem, as long as his job is done well. I was saying to Roger...